This week we have a full moon in Take Charge Aries and Venus, planet of love, is moving into freedom-oriented Sagittarius. All of this, an empowered moment and more in my new intuitive energy forecast for the week of Monday, October 14th through Sunday, October 20th, 2024. Stay tuned. This is Colleen Lemma, Starseed Astrologer and Spiritual Messenger from Sacred Soul Empowerment, here with your weekly intuitive energy forecast. For this week's reading, we'll be using the Light Seer's Tarot by Chris Ann. That will be the main message for everyone. And your special message card this week, depending on your stone of choice, is going to be coming from the Earth Magic Oracle deck, and this one is by Stephen Farmer. So before we get into the stones of choice or the astrology for the week, let's go ahead and settle in and do an empowered moment. So if you can close your eyes, take a deep breath, exhale and letting your body relax, feeling centered and balanced and grounded, visualizing golden white light all around you. This is the golden white light of source God, creator God energy, full of protection and guidance, assistance. Let's breathe in that golden white light into every cell of our bodies. And as you exhale, letting go of all that your body, mind and soul no longer needs. Silently calling in your angels, guides, master guides, and teachers of the highest vibration of light to guide you, to bring messages this week, to assist you in moving forward on the next step of your highest and most important destiny path, because this week is the full moon in Aries, the sign of the self, the sign of confidence, courage, leadership, independence. So focus your energy now on your sense of self, your most confident and positive, take charge sense of self, your individuality, your assertiveness, your wishes, your hopes, your desires, your ability to take action when opportunities arise and present themselves. Focusing on all of those positive qualities of fire sign Aries. And as you take a deep breath Breathe in those positive qualities of Aries into every aspect of your beingness, into every cell of your body. Breathing in the confidence, the courage, the ability to take action with assertiveness, the vitality, the physical energy, Breathing it in. And as you exhale, letting go of all that you no longer need to hold on to. Focusing on healing the self. Releasing what is no longer healthy or appropriate releasing all that is not in alignment with your true self, your individuality. And as you take one last deep healing, cleansing and balancing breath, 
And as you exhale, you can open your eyes when you feel ready and return to this time and place and space. And let's go ahead and take a look at our stones of choice for this week. Okay, so I did go out. My birthday was October 8th, so when I went out, I went out and purchased a few new stones. And this first one here is called Rubellite. This is a white stone. It's got some very light lavender colored purple in it. And the Rubellite is a heart chakra stone, said to be the stone of the heart chakra, helps to open the heart chakra, leads one to peace and harmony, encourages compassion and gentleness. It's a stone of friendship and sympathy and encouragement. It has a life-giving force to it. It's connected to the root chakra, which is your sense of vitality and groundedness and protection and security. It helps that good prana to flow easily. It brings healing to the body, mind, and soul, revitalizes your passion and your strength, and helps with loving and to strengthen loving commitments. That's rubellite. And then your second stone of choice is septarian. I love this stone. Septarian. With healing, this is a healing stone. It can actually help with what's called seasonal affect disorder. So if you have a lack of sunlight where you are, which I'm not sure that we're quite into that season yet where we're gonna, in some areas, uh, have lack of sunlight, but this can help with that. It helps us to understand our feelings and emotions. It helps to improve communication skills. It helps to cleanse the aura and eliminate negative lower vibrational feelings and emotions, helps with grounding and can bring happiness and inner understanding. It's connected with the lower chakras, the root chakra, the sacral chakra, and especially the solar plexus chakra. You can see that wonderful golden yellow color, which will activate confidence, courage, and self-empowerment. And then stone number three, is Amazonite. Amazonite, and this helps with spiritual growth. It actually connects to and activates the heart chakra and the throat chakra, promoting a sense of inner peace and spiritual growth. Helps with communication, of course, with that throat chakra, helping people to speak their truth with confidence and clarity. Helps with luck and success, with money and luck in all endeavors helps with confidence and courage, creativity, creative self-expression, and prosperity. It's known to bring prosperity to the wearer. It's also known as the stone of truth and the stone of courage. So again, we've got the rubellite. I think I had it the other way, but you can actually see the kind of the almost reddish purple in it when I hold it straight up. And then we've got the septarian. And then we've got the amazonite. And of course, as soon as I start the video, we've got some wonderful things going on outside. So you can probably hear those beeping noises from the truck. I apologize for that. So let's go ahead and take a look at the astrology for this week. We start out on Monday, the 14th of October, with the sun shining its light through the lens of Libra, sign of partnerships, relationships, balance, and harmony. It, however, is in a challenging connection to Mars, the warrior planet of action and forward movement, which is in the water sign of cancer right now. So Mars is a fiery planet, it's in water sign cancer, it kind of waters down the energy, making it more sensitive, making that masculine energy um, more balanced within its feminine. And this challenging connection could actually bring some challenges in partnerships, um, some need to um, look at some different difficulties that might be cropping up or has cropped up in relationships. Now, this is romantic, friendship, family, all types of relationships, maybe especially family, because Mars is in the family sign of Cancer. Cancer does rule home and family. I think, though, because Mars is in Cancer, it kind of 
softens his aggressive nature, his warrior nature a little bit. So it makes it more likely that we're able to, especially with the sun in balanced Libra, to look at how do I cooperate? How do I compromise? How do we work this out? How do we share our feelings and understand what's going on in this little bit of a situation of conflict? So I think that it'll be able to be worked out. Also on Monday the 14th, we have Venus, ruler of the divine feminine archetype, ruler of love and partnership, ruler of money and finances and resources. And she's in Scorpio right now. Scorpio is about personal power, owning your power. Scorpio is about other people's resources. And it's opposing Uranus in Taurus. And Uranus is the great awakener, the planet of sudden and unexpected um, redirections or situations. It can bring a sense of freedom and independence. So I think the Divine Feminine is going to be very passionate about being in her sense of liberation and freedom. I think the Divine Feminine in relationships and maybe even in money and finances might experience some sort of uh, surprise, unexpected shift in energy. Now, this doesn't have to be a negative shift of energy. This could also be a positive shift of energy. There's some sort of surprising, unexpected, out of the blue sort of energy. But again, within relationships has that sense of freedom. Within finances, it has this sense of the unexpected. And then on Tuesday the 15th, Venus in Scorpio is in a positive connection now to Neptune in Pisces. And Neptune is the planet of unconditional love, compassion, forgiveness. I think this bodes well for relationship matters. Neptune also rules uh, magic and miracles. So this bodes well for finances and money matters. Um, I think the only thing we have to watch out for because this is a positive aspect is to maybe where we wear rose colored glasses. You have to be careful to not kind of be in the fantasy and illusion of it all to, to uh, maybe wait out the transit before you invest money, for instance, or wait out the transit until you say yes to the proposal of marriage, because it has this romantic kind of fantasy, again, rose-colored glasses sort of energy to it. So we might want to wait a couple of days before we, again, make some sort of investment with our money and finances, or before we um, kind of jump in with feet first into some sort of new relationship or relationship commitment. But it has a really nice, again, feeling. In fact, in relationship, you might meet somebody new if you're not in a relationship already. Venus and Scorpio can be very passionate and Neptune and Pisces brings again this lovely, romantic, magical energy. So look for potentially meeting a new person. Now, whether that be romantic or even a new friendship, this might bring in something magical. On Thursday the 17th, we've got a full moon at 24 degrees of Aries. Full moons are about releasing, letting go, purging. It's the end of a cycle on some level. And it's in the sign of Aries, sign of the self. So we might be healing aspects of ourself. We might be healing aspects of our sense of independence or self-sufficiency, our confidence, our courage. The full moon makes a lot of aspects. It's connected to Chiron, the wounded healer that rules past life wounds. It's connecting to Jupiter, which is the planet of expansion and our perceptions and belief systems, uh, which is in Gemini right now. It's making a more challenging aspect to both Mars and Pluto. Mars is the warrior um, which again can be a little impatient and a little bit knee-jerk reacting. It's in, again, Cancer, sign that rules home and family, and it squares Pluto, which is in Capricorn right now, um, the tail end of Capricorn. So that can bring some possible explosive emotional energy because full moons expand our emotions and feelings, making us more emotionally triggered more easily, especially in Aries, because Aries can be uh, again, that sudden, quick, fiery, passionate, impatient sort of energy. And with that square to Mars and that square to Pluto, it definitely might be setting off some uh, emotional buttons there. 
Also on Thursday the 17th, same day as that full moon in Aries, we've got Venus again in Cancer, and she's making a positive sextile to Pluto, planet of death and rebirth, transformation and regeneration. So there's an opportunity here to take our power back and to move through transformation in relationship and money matters. And then right after that on the same day, Venus will move out of Scorpio and into the sign of Sagittarius, where she's going to be until November 11th. So Venus, ruler of relationships, she's going to want more freedom, more liberation, more independence, expanding into new horizons. And in money matters, she might be more of a risk taker. In fact, uh, Sagittarius is a lucky sign of the zodiac. So we might be lucky in money and finances. It might be the time to invest in something um, and to just look at things with a glass half full mentality to bring in more blessings of abundance. On Friday the 18th, the sun in Libra, sign of partnerships, is in a difficult in conjunct to Uranus. And then on Sunday, the Sun in Libra is in a difficult in conjunct to Neptune in Pisces. So between Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, we've got adjustments that we need to make in relationships. Um, that's what the in conjunct means. It's all about making adjustments. And these are adjustments on a higher evolutionary level because it involves Uranus and Neptune, which are evolutionary planets. So there could be some difficulty, but at the same time, there's great potential for positive evolution and growth in the area of relationships and partnerships, as well as the balancing of our divine masculine feminine within ourselves. So that's a little bit about what's going on astrologically. Let's take a look at the messages from our angels and guides. And the first card that came out, <clears throat> excuse me, is the two of pentacles. Now, this is like the two of earth, the two of discs. The two is about balance, which is interesting because we've got the sun, right? The sun is highlighted at the beginning of the week, at the end of the week, and in the middle of the week for that full moon, as the moon is in Aries, the sun is in, in Libra. So it is all about the balancing here, the balancing act. Now this is balance within the area, the tangible areas of our life, like money and finances, like job and career, like projects that we're working on, home and family even, because those are these everyday kind of tangible aspects to our lives. So we're needing to do a lot of balancing act here. We've got, uh, I'm really drawn by the red. We've got red in the sky. We've got red kind of in her, her skirt. We've got one of the uh, pentacles here is red as well. So that's really dealing with matters of security. Do I feel secure and stable within myself? Do I feel secure and stable within my relationship? Do I feel secure and stable with my my finances and where I'm at with, with money and career? So I feel like, again, we're doing a lot of balancing in regards to these matters of security, okay? Um, let's go ahead and take a look at the second card. The second card is the Ace of Swords. Now, Aces are about new beginnings. The Suit of Swords is the mental realm. So we have a new beginning in our thoughts, our perceptions, our perspectives, new beginning, new ideas coming in, new beginning in how we're communicating with other people. So again, it's highlighting this mental realm here. It's like we got this little kind of snail swirl kind of going on here where we're expanding our mind. We're expanding how we look at things. And that can be how we look at our career, how we look at ourselves, how we look at our relationships. There's this expansion going on and a higher thought. You can see kind of like the white light here coming down and shining its light upon the mind here. So there's this higher thought and higher perceptions going on with the way we're thinking and perceiving and believing and communicating with other people. So again, a new beginning and how our mind is working, how we're, how we're um, again, perceiving our reality here, which is a good thing. It's a very, very good thing here. And don't discount the, um, new ideas coming in. So this could be new ideas with your career, your job, new ideas with 
how to create more financial security, new ideas, how to create more balance and harmony within family, friendship, or significant romantic relationships. Um, and communication is definitely key as well with all of that. All right, the last, the last card came out as a set of two cards. And so let's look at the first of those last two cards. Okay, we've got Major Arcana 6. This is the lovers. Well, we are in Libra season yet, right? Until next week, actually. So we've got all sorts of relationships, a balance of relationships, the harmony, the compromise, the cooperation in relationships. And this is also relationship to yourself, the divine feminine and divine masculine within yourself and bringing that into balance. Now, in this particular lover's card from the Light Seer's Tarot, uh, the man is slightly above the woman. Now, that could mean that there's something out of balance a little bit. Maybe the masculine in yourself is a little out of balance. We need to be more nurturing and allowing and faith and, you know, um, intuitive. We need to kind of bring in those feminine qualities a little bit within ourselves. Maybe it's the opposite way, you know, maybe the masculine, maybe the, the masculine of aggressiveness or frustration, you know, or impatience, maybe that's out of balance. So this can be bringing something into balance within yourself, but it can also be bringing something into balance within relationships. Maybe there's been a long stretch of things not feeling equal, not feeling, um, you know, harmonious or, or again, balanced within your relationships, no matter what kind of relationship it is, right? We want to bring this into balance where we're looking at each other, you know, equally, we're treating each other equally. We're respecting each other. We're supporting each other, right? We don't want things to be out of balance. So this could also, again, bring in a new relationship, but there's definitely a focus on relationships with this card. Let's look at the card that came out with the lovers. Okay, we got another Major Arcana, and this is Major Arcana number eight. I had to look because in some decks, the Strength card is the 11th Major Arcana, but in this deck, it's the 8th Major Arcana. And the eight is a number of empowerment, okay? And in fact, the Lover's card is the 6th Major Arcana. The 6, if you think of a upward pointing triangle and a downward pointing triangle, which kind of makes a hexagram or a Star of David configuration, the number six is about balance, as above, so below, and bringing things into balance. The number eight also is about balance. And in fact, if you look very closely on her arm here, we've got the infinity symbol, which when we turn it this way is the number eight, right? The number eight, when we turn it on its side, is the infinity symbol. Whoops, it's really tiny, so you can't see it. But think about a number eight, and we turn it on its side, it is also about balance. This is balancing within the heart, the heart energies, the heart chakra, balancing into your confidence and courage and inner strength. It's about being the gentle lamb, but also being the fierce lion. That's where that strength and empowerment comes in. So again, we're balancing the divine masculine and the divine feminine with both of these cards here. And whether it's in the area of relationships or whether it's in the area of within yourself and your own inner confidence and courage and opening that heart chakra, right? Here's a little heart here, although the heart chakra would be a little bit higher. In fact, it's over the solar plexus chakra. And the strength card is about the solar plexus chakra of confidence, courage, and empowerment. But she's got the heart over that solar plexus chakra. So we're balancing the nurturing, kind, compassionate, unconditionally loving heart with our confidence and courage and sense of empowerment. So it feels like we may need to maybe take our power back in some relationship matters, but we can do it in a loving and kind and, and gentle way, or perhaps we need to be the lion and do it in a more assertive and, and positively fierce way, so to speak. All right, let's go ahead and see what message comes out, depending on your stone of choice, your special message for the week. So let's all take a deep breath. Tune into your stone of choice. What was your stone of choice? Rubellite or did it was it sardonyx? Was that the name of that that stone? Sar no septarian. 
Septarian, okay? So rubellite, septarian, or amazonite. I don't know where I got sardonyx. I guess it begins with an S like septarian. All right, so for those of you that chose the, oh, I keep having to look. Rubellite, yeah, rubellite. I wanted to make sure I was calling it by its proper name here. All right, so we got that shuffled enough. I'm gonna shuffle this way now. And special message for this week, for this week of the full moon in Aries and Venus moving into liberated Sagittarius, Rubellite people, what's their message? This one's calling my attention here. So you're needing to move into some self-reflection, interestingly enough, right? And it says winter solstice. Now, of course, we're not at the winter solstice, but when we are in the winter solstice, it is a time of going within, reflecting, um, contemplating, you know, meditating, being silent within yourself. So, you know, with this week, if with all the energies happening and the fiery sign of Aries full moon and the fiery sign of Sagittarius liberation for the divine feminine, Maybe you need to reflect on, are you owning your power? Are you in your power? Have you given your power away? Do you need to take your power back? And whether that's in a relationship or a situation or circumstance or a faulty belief system or mindset, it's time to reflect on that, to be still, to go within and be silent. The one thing that does support this silent reflection is Venus, ruler of the divine feminine archetype in Scorpio, because Scorpio is a very kind of silent, internal, self-reflective sort of energy, okay? It's like the silent power. <laughs> and so moving into that time of self-reflection, we've got, you know, a lot of the what I it looks like birch trees to me we've got the snow but this is where the reflection is right the water the reflection of the water and just being still and silent and um, it's like you're doing this winter solstice time period a little bit early but go within and reflect on your sense of power I feel like it has to do with your sense of power with Venus and Scorpio this week all right let's put that back in the deck and you know what? There was another card that was sticking out in the deck when I pulled that card. And they're saying that this should be the septarian. So septarian is ocean with ebb and flow. So we still got this water going on, you know, but instead of the stillness of the water, like the previous card, we've got the ocean ebb and flow. So I think this full moon in Aries is gonna maybe trigger some emotional stuff, some feeling stuff. And whether that's with another person or in a situation where your buttons are pushed or whether that's just within yourself where emotions and feelings are rising and coming up to the surface. I feel like this all in all is a positive thing no matter how it turns out because we've got the sun rising over the horizon. So there is light being shown onto this emotional kind of tide, this emotional, the, the emotional waves, the ebb and flow of the feelings that you're experiencing. The light is shining upon that so you can see it a little bit more clearly, so you can have greater awareness of the emotions, what it's connected to, um, and what it's all about. Got this little portion of blue-green over here, right? That was catching my eye here. So the blue-green, it's heart chakra and throat chakra. So maybe if this is regarding a, a relationship matter, um, maybe it's a past relationship matter. And it, it, to me, it's like being in the heart, but speaking your truth with clarity, right? The blue is the throat chakra, the green is the heart chakra. So we're gonna have compassion for ourselves, but maybe we can also have compassion possibly for the other person where there's been challenge or disagreement, seeing, seeing them with like spiritual eyes instead of our ego human eyes, right? Seeing them as a soul that's moving through their own soul challenges. And if we can have that heart chakra compassion, but yet still speak our truth, create a boundary and speak the boundary um, and just be transparent with, with what we feel and what we need, 
then I think that that combination is going to assist you. Don't, don't do the speaking of the truth while you're in the emotional fluctuation, right? When there's like emotions coming up to the surface, depression, angst, grief, anger, frustration, maybe not the best time to speak. So wait for the ebb from the flow, wait, wait for the ebb to kind of happen where you feel more grounded and centered before you speak the truth. All right, let's put that back in the deck. And the last stone of choice was the Amazonite. So Amazonite people for this week, Amazonite, Amazonite. You know, this one's kind of calling my attention right here. And we'll fill, oh dear, I can't even believe it's reflection again, you guys. So a lot of watery, emotional feeling energy. This one goes back to the same as the Rubalite people where you're, need, you're needing to kind of still the emotional body, you know, be still within your feelings, you know, look at deeply your feelings, reflect upon them. What are you feeling? How do you feel? A lot of us are disconnected from our emotions, disconnected with how we feel. And a lot of times uh, what we do to not connect to our feelings is to keep busy keeping busy, going places, doing things, calling people, you know, which those are all great things to do. But sometimes we do it as an avoidance factor from looking at and reflecting on our own inner journey and inner feelings and what's going on here within. And so both the Rubalite and the Amazonite people are needing to be still and reflect, whereas the Septarian, yes, right? Septarian people are needing to kind of still and balance the ebb and flow of the emotions and to, you know, when they're more centered and grounded to maybe speak that truth. I think with the, the first and the last stone, we're getting in touch with our truth within ourselves, but the middle stone, the Septarian, we're maybe needing to speak our truth within some sort of relationship or circumstance. So I hope you've all enjoyed this weekly energy forecast, sending you all much love and light. Until we meet again next week, everyone, namaste.